Hello, and welcome to another Big Think Mailbag. We've got a large crew here. We've got Bob. Hey, guys. From GeekyBoots.com. We've got Dr. Agro. Uh, hello. From Dr. Agro. We've got KZ from KZExcellent.com. Hello. And Mr. Feel from Mr. Feel's Wild Ride. Haldo. We got a lot of questions, so let's get started. I'm going to start with a question from New Lavender. What's a dish or meal you invented when you were a kid that you still enjoy? Uh, closest thing for me is when I invented the I poured nacho cheese on my eggs at Shoney's and ate it to my brother's oh. dismay. Oh, oh that's to my fucking dismay. <laughs> <laughs> But I haven't checked in on that again in years because they closed all the Shonies. <laughs> Giggy boot seats. <laughs> yeah, the fucking Shonies. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence on this one. I don't know. It could be good. I don't know. Like cheesy eggs. What kind sort of, of eggs? Uh, they were scrambled. They were they were soft scrambled okay, so, eggs. So, so what you need to do is you need to get a camera and go into the closest gas station <laughs> cool. with a bowl full of scrambled eggs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sir what, are you, sir, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm a citizen. I'm traveling. I'm a traveler. <laughs> I'm a sovereign. I am a sovereign citizen. <laughs> oh my God. The texture is what's bugging me about that. Mm-hmm. Because they're, ooh, they're both the soft yellow creamy part. Uh-huh. Well, I assume <laughs> that it's Choney's fried eggs for like scrambled eggs. They'll be super dried out. It's pretty dried out. True. It'd, it'd be basically like cereal at that point. <laughs> Right? Oh, no, it was oh, not. Please. It was not that. I, I promise mean, like, you. I, if, if you made that dish with good ingredients, <laughs> like maybe put it on toast or something, or like on a hoagie roll. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> there needs to be something to keep it together. Is what you're saying? I, I just huh. need contrast. Like, I, I, so I need to be able to bite into something, not an infinity of soft <laughs> goo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not, not <laughs> like is is that ah. Uh. It's like I it's hate like this entire podcast. Dan uh Dan like makes the uh the, the that Chinese steamed eggs dish that's just like soft custard and then just hits the cheese pump <laughs> with the bowl under oh. it. I open the industrial size nacho cheese can from a Walmart and just pour it all in. Oh. Give me two pumps of that movie theater butter. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I plan on checking in on that again when I go to a Shoney's so I can get the authentic experience, assuming they still do buffets. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have I no just... idea. Even before, uh, you know, pre- PC, when it was uh, pre-COVID. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea if they're still doing that. Anyway. Hey, hey, does anyone else have a food or a dish or meal you invented when you were a kid that you still enjoy? Well, I haven't tried this one forever. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Mm. But I used to just get frozen taquitos. Okay. Uh, put sprinkled cheese in whatever seasonings I found sitting on the counter on top. <laughs> okay. That's a terrifying <laughs> phrase there. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So it could be cumin or it could be taco seasoning or crack um, or mace. sugar. <laughs> Bob, no. just, Bob just sprayed it with mace. Carpet fresh. <laughs> Italian. Borax. <laughs> <laughs> they were all foods. This was the kitchen counter. <laughs> Cooking sherry. <laughs> <laughs> Balsamic vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd microwave that and it all melt over the taquitos. And then I have like cheesy taquitos with some seasoning. And I remember that being really good. No, yeah, it sounds great. When I was a kid, I, I took a magic eraser and covered it in <laughs> cheese sauce. No! <laughs> well, at least your texture difference isn't that. Yeah, no. I don't want to think about the texture of that. Fuck y'all. <laughs> oh. So do you think it, like, wipes off the inside of your mouth? <laughs> I assume it just removes my esophagus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it's basically fiberglass, so. Yeah. Right? Right? Anyway... That sounds great, Bob. Taquitos with spices that you found. <laughs> found flavors. <laughs> found flavors, Bob's new YouTube food series. <laughs> I'd watch it. Bob's like, in order to simulate the experience, I'm standing on my knees blindfolded, grabbing whatever's on the counter. <laughs> We've broken into this mid-century ranch-style home in the middle of the night to see what flavor experiences we can find left out for us. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
This wasn't meant to seem so devious. <laughs> Well, you're the one eating <laughs> random spices, man. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what you're expecting. <laughs> yeah, I got my my because as a kid, as a kid, this is why my brain specifically went to you spray it with mace. As a kid, <laughs> as a kid, my my mother's friend had mace on her keychain, and I thought it was one of those fresh in your breath sprays. No, no, no. it was not good. <laughs> no, player one was having a bad no. day. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that's why my brain went to yeah mace. <laughs> Bob's just gonna find mace on the counter. Uh, did anyone else have a dish or meal, probably not involving mace, that they invented when they were a kid that they still enjoy? Uh, I will. I would eat this sometimes, but I uh, to, I feel like to better myself as a human being, it's important I never eat it again. So you make ramen noodles. Okay. All right. Mm. You drain most of the broth. Uh-oh. Oh, this could be good. And then you put in oyster crackers. Hell yeah. Huh. huh. All right. Or or crush normal crackers. Yeah. No, and the I grotesque the gro the grotesqueness of yeah, let me put carbs on top of these carbs. Yeah, I could yeah. I couldn't actually it's, do this. This sounds weird coming from me, given what I brought. But. I don't know. You're talking to a guy who used to make spaghetti pizza at his old job. Wait, what? <laughs> you did that there? Hell yeah. That that feels even remotely plausible. <laughs> this just feels like dumb child mixed carbohydrates. <laughs> feels like as a kid, uh, you know, I'd like to go to the park and wait for people to throw bread at me. And then I would just eat it and run around <laughs> very excitedly. It's like, feel that sounds like a duck. Were you a duck as a child? <laughs> And th this is not one that I eat re that I have eaten with any time within the past decade or probably even fifteen years. Uh, we we had a George Foreman grill because if you're if you're a dumb zoomer who don't know nothing, uh, that was a real big trend in like the late nineties. Oh yeah, early yeah. aughts was, it was was the George Foreman grill because it was healthier. It would drain all the all the fat and flavor away from your food. It knocks um, out the fat. Yeah, it knocks out the fat. <laughs> yeah. So so you so you could enjoy. Uh, the, the most unappetizing chicken breast in human history. Yes. <laughs> uh, but what I would do is I would take like a Kaiser roll or like a sandwich roll, like a big one for like from a bakery and crush it in the George Foreman grill and toast it until it was hard. And then I would eat it with ketchup. What the fuck? What? Yeah. That's actually weirder than the eggs. For, for what reason? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was, I was like 12. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like the you had me with the the bread part, the part where you co coated in ketchup is a little weird, but sure. No, yeah, you got some crunchy. Maybe you it was maybe ketchup. it wasn't ketchup. Maybe it wasn't ketchup. It was some kind of dip. I don't even remember what. Maybe even sometimes it was like mustard, like I was doing a pretzel type thing. Nice. Was it fancy sauce? <laughs> no. But yeah, that that was my thing. Where it's like, yeah, it's just a brick. It's just a <laughs> crunchy brick. It's just it's a brick. <laughs> Bill, were you supervised at all while you were doing this one? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he might no, have been probably in his not. 20s. No, prob know. <laughs> probably not, because it would have been it would it probably would have been in summer. So it's like, don't make me fucking go to the uh God, what was it called? Because both my parents worked. So mm -hmm. during the summer, I was like, Don't don't make me go to the fucking Yucca Center, which was like a community center where they sent kids in the mm -hmm. summer. Yeah. Or it's like it was like four bucks a day or whatever. And some poor teenager would have to deal with forty kids. Yep. Ugh. But the, the, but I I, try, I turned like twelve or thirteen. I somewhere around there. And I'm like I don't, I don't want to fucking go anymore. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, you mostly just sit and play Nintendo. So I guess we can try not sending you to the slave camp. Uh, and then I would need food, and I'd be like, I, I crush bread in George Foreman. <laughs> 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 All right. Did anyone else have any uh great dishes uh, or meals? Uh not necessarily, but sure. There there was one I tried as a child that only happened I only tried it once because it was a horrible idea. My parents were waiting for me to execute on said idea. Because mm -hmm. I talked to them through it. I went, well, like like this this spaghetti o meal you've given me. I'm going to put all of it in my mouth, so what if I just all put it in one thing, including mm -hmm. the drink? Mm. 
Mm. And I'm like, well, the drink goes in my mouth. What's the problem of just pouring it into the bowl with the food? And they're like, my dad went, that's a great idea. You should do that. And (laughs) I knew it was a bad fucking idea. But, you know, as has been documented on on this very mailbag, uh, my dad fucking sucks ass. Know, sounds, ass. Like, sounds like your dad's a tutor and a scholar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, in that way he is. So that 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 was an example of one. Uh, one that I learned through my mother being the whitest she could be would always prepare ramen the exact same way, which was to make no broth and make it like spaghetti, where it just comes out and it's just the boil the boiled noodles mixed with the flavor. But me as a child would read the back of the box of Kraft Easy Mac where they're like, it's creamy if you add milk. So I decided to just add milk to ramen. And I think a lot of people do yeah. that, actually. Yeah, a lot of people do that. I've never done it. Yeah, I just I did it based on just no suggestion, but what it said on the back of a, a Kraft box. Yeah, that makes in sense. In 2002. That is also noodles. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it turned the ramen into this uh, incredibly heavy dish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it definitely empowers the thing that I spent 80 cents on. <laughs> Dr- dressing up ramen is always the funniest thing to me, where it's like, I, I need more parts to my 49 cent food. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's like a Chicago dog. You, you start with the cheapest, most technical it's a food imaginable, and then pile on real shit till it's a meal. <laughs> right. It's like stone soup. You know, I, I read the other day uh, an interesting factoid. Mm. Uh, that, that, that a hot dog is basically, you know, churned up processed meat inside of an intestine casing, mm-hmm. which means that after you eat a hot dog, it's still a hot dog because it's chewed up processed meat inside of an intestinal casing. Yes. Yeah. You now have become part of the hot dog. You are what you eat. Mm-hmm. This checks out. Man. Uh, to, to continue the latchkey kid cookbook, um, I used to, my mother would keep dry goods in the cabinet that weren't really for eating. They were just for storage. (laughs) And then like every couple of years she'd clean it out and throw a bunch of expired shit away. Uh, (laughs) so I, I started raiding that thing for snacks, uh, because you know, then I wouldn't get caught. So I, I started taking semi-sweet baking chocolate chips and putting, Five of those on a single saltine cracker. What? For the perfect balance of sweet and salty. <laughs> <laughs> the golden ratio. That sounds pretty smart. I don't know. <laughs> would, these were always days when I would like when the house was out of milk. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> so it was it's a very dry experience, but it's I, I'll tell you, if you'll sit down and just do it, build one cracker at a time, put put the chips on there, eat it really meditate on the flavor as it evolves while you chew. It's a very zen sort of dining experience. (laughs) Okay. Well, we're going to move on. (laughs) Very zen. Uh, Lockbox 7 has... Oh, I can't think of Matchbox 20. Uh, Has sent in an email... (laughs) Hey, PTD Guru, what is your favorite or most memorable video game advertisement via TV commercials, billboards, magazines, etc. you can think of? Uh, uh, favorite? Uh, no, thanks. Most memorable? I'm going to give you a top three. <laughs> Don't take them all. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll give you a top one that's really obvious. And then if the, nobody call it, claims the other two, I'll come back with them. PS3 baby. Damn it. Of course. <laughs> yeah, crying baby room. Top of the pile. Yeah, it's terrifying. Get a PS5 and shit your pants, I guess. <laughs> that's that's definitely one of the most memorable. Uh, I'm I'm opening the floor for anyone else to throw some out before I continue my march. Uh, the, the PSP ad where the, it's not, like nut on the go. <laughs> that of course. Thing, yeah. That thing is way too memorable and horrible. Okay, that's another <laughs> of the three. I don't think anyone's getting the last one, though, so I'm safe. Uh, is it the PS9 ad? No, but that is a really good one. Mm-hmm. It is. For any, uh, there, there, there might be some confusion here. It is, in fact, a PS2 ad that advertises a PS9. They're like, the future is basically the 90s, just with better video games and more glass buildings. And I'm like, shit, that's that's a future I think we can all look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's better than what we got, frankly. <laughs> yup. Uh, so 
I didn't know what an RPG was, mm -hmm. uh, but I liked Mario. So I saw this commercial, the, the Super Mario RPG commercial on television. What? I don't think I ever saw that. And oh, it no, motivated no. me to buy this game, to buy the game and got me into RPGs. Because I, I, I just saw it because it didn't show like combat really in this commercial. Huh. It's really cool to have a, like an origin point that's external for getting into RPGs. Like, I think that's really neat because I don't have that. I just have it's Final Fantasy. We we owned it. <laughs> We've always owned them all. I don't. <laughs> that and Dragon Quest. But we let Grandpa keep Dragon Quest. That's a, Dragon Quest is scary hard compared to Final Fantasy. Uh, let's see. Other memorable ones. Uh, I remember the one where Rayman has a huge cock. Yeah, that one's weird. Yeah. Not sure that was, which was just the mag just the magazine ad where he's at the urinal and everybody was like, damn, <laughs> damn, son, where'd you get this one at? <laughs> oh, I, I remember the Paper Mario magazine ad, which I always thought was very clever. Oh, that thing's incredibly clever. Yeah, where it's just uh, a picture. Of, it's a full page ad where it's a picture of Mario with like a with a scissor line around him and it says free demo. <laughs> it's really good uh and the last one if these are all fucking mario for some reason mario has generally had really good advertising it's actually kind of surprising that uh nintendo is so good at it considering other things they're very bad at you know uh this isn't a specific commercial but i'm gonna go ahead and do a shout out for play it loud that tagline's pretty good and i like that that coincided with all the different colors of game boys oh yeah Oh yeah, that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> the Mar the the douchebag Mario tribal tattoo ad always <laughs> kills me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm in my mid to late teens and I see that ad and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it, it, it didn't get debunked that Mario had that until uh, Odyssey. Because he always had his that part of his arm covered. <laughs> God, that would have been mind blowing if he just had it in Odyssey. <laughs> it's like what James Rolfe's tattoos show, right? <laughs> Be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> there was that incredibly obnoxious Conker's Bad Fur Day TV spot that they used to play all the time, either on Adult oh, Swim God. or Comedy Central. What? Oh, yeah. It was just like this chick in a dirty ass wrecked hotel room, like the morning after on the phone to one of her friends oh. talking about all like the crazy. Like, I think she specifically says that Conker stood up on a bar during a confrontation and pissed on people. Oh, yeah. That happens in the game. Yeah. So th that the, the implication that Conker had a wild night and then slept with this woman in a trashed hotel room. Yep. Okay, I'm starting to remember this that now that I'm so seeing much. it. Yeah, man. Awesome. This looks like a lot of, uh, this looks like a music video that would have come with a PSP UMD sampler. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. You know, what? one did come to mind where uh, I really liked Golden Sun's uh, TV commercial they did, where they're like in this opera house and then the chandelier turns into a dragon. Oh, and yeah. I, I, guess, oh. I guess that ad was so memorable that in Dark Dawn, they made that a real summon. <laughs> nice. They just made a, a, a chandelier dragon in that game. Oh, there was that whole slate of live action Pokemon ads with the cartoon Pokemon in them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, re I, remember the, I remember the one where the uh, where the school bus gets crushed by the. Uh... Yeah. By the like the junk crusher and it spits out a Game Boy with Pokemon in it. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh yeah, I remember that. I think that original Smash Bros. commercial is yeah. still solid. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. gonna yeah, mention that next. That one was pretty good. Yeah, that one's definitely one of the more memorable. Uh, I'm noticing every single one of these commercials we're bringing up, uh, at least that I've checked so far, is available on a YouTube channel called RGTV. So if you're interested in this stuff, huh. maybe that's a good place to browse. Nice. Uh. Okay, I'll, I'll now say my number three. Okay. 
Uh, the Xbox ad where a woman gives projectile birth to a baby no. and then the baby <laughs> ages in fast forward while screaming through the air turns into an old man and it slams into the ground and dies directly into a grave. God, yeah. And then it yeah. goes life is short Xbox. I only ever saw that one on the internet later. <laughs> man. It's British. That's why. Uh, Imagine if Microsoft had marketing even half that. <laughs> Oh yeah, remember that other Xbox commercial that is like uh, hundreds of people or something running around? Jump a, in, a, yeah, jump in, yeah. yeah. Where they, they yeah. run around a city using finger guns. Oh yeah, Didn't that was that a get really good banned? ad. Uh, they 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 pulled back on the ad and I believe cut some scenes mm. because because I think it may have been in a school, but I'm not sure. Did Sony ever put out that long ass Michael thing they made as an ad? They or they put that... out a shortened version of Michael okay. as an ad, if I recall correctly. The weird thing is, all of their marketing from Michael forward uh, took the shape of the Michael ad, where it just became, "Here's hyper fantasy video games are real. We spent a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Look, that's cosplay Nathan Drake." <laughs> uh, yeah. Man, thanks for remembering the, the name of the guy because I would not have remembered his name. Mm -hmm. You know, that um that ad where Kevin Butler showed up in a Nintendo Wii commercial, that was pretty memorable. <laughs> <laughs> it feels oh, oh, oh. like Michelin tires or something. Yeah, it feels like anytime someone's career is publicly executed, it's that a pretty was, memorable ad. That was, yeah. that, was oh, that was back during the Romance of the Three Kingdoms era of the console wars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was so romantic back then. Before we got to the, uh, n none of us really feel like trying at competing with each other. <laughs> We're all kind of in three different directions now. Yeah. Uh, I, f I feel like out of all the Kevin Butler ads, like the real ones, uh -huh. I think the most memorable one is the one where he talks about buttons are important to play a video <laughs> game. <laughs> Just making fun <laughs> of very specifically the Kinect. And I'm like, that's fair. I've used Kinect. <laughs> I I also agree. I find buttons important in pressing them. Yeah, as it turns yeah, out. Yeah, so do I. I played Final <laughs> Fantasy 15. It doesn't work out when you don't do that. <laughs> yeah, you need, to, you need to press those goddamn buttons. Uh, <laughs> Another ad that came to mind, the um, the PSP uh, France Ferdinand ad. Oh, yeah. Where, where I just entirely associate that song with this PSP ad of everywhere this PSP goes while the music plays. Hmm. Yeah, that was a really good ad. But then they were like, what if nut? <laughs> uh, yeah, they, then, then they're like... For Loco Roco, we're going to have these dust balls. Oh, uh, God, with that one Spanish was so rough. Go. It's like carpet you can look at outside. Yeah, that is. Uh... What a fucking nightmare. <laughs> but between that and the black squirrels, I'm like, and, and that one billboard ad that said PlayStation P, uh, portable white is coming and it showed a white woman uh, beating up a black woman may also have been. See, that's that's evil British marketing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Xbox is good British marketing. Additionally, screw every PSP commercial that said you could play it outside. You could not play that fucking thing outside. <laughs> yeah, that is also correct. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, uh, like just because, just because, because of course we have to, we have to bring it up. Uh, remember Dante's Inferno when they killed a fucking goat? Did they actually? Well, they brought a dead goat out. I don't think they like wow. executed it in front of people. I didn't. I didn't know didn't about that. I didn't know about that. Yeah, because I just knew about the the dead space. Thing there, where... there, there was there was some press event where they just had like a like a goat with its entrails out as part of the like catering. Oh, uh, what the fuck is wrong with them? Yeah, Yay. or maybe that was a god of war. I'm having trouble remembering. I mean, it, it, it was it was. You were probably right the first time. Those guys did some fucked up try hard nonsense for yeah. that game. Yeah, they did. Uh, worth noting that's during the John Riccatello era of EA. <laughs> yeah, that also was during the. Okay, it was it was God of War. Oh wow, really? It was for what uh, the fuck. It was for God of War two. Damn it! I was hoping he was gonna say Ascension. <laughs> that's what that's what I, I was checking because I was like, <laughs> oh man, that really seems like it would be Ascension. Uh, Dante's Inferno was just when they hired fake religious activists to protest the game. And everybody's like, we've never heard of this church, mm. and you all seem to be actors. Please go away. That, that feels like the natural we need to escalate type of thing when you see ads like the Dead Space 2, your mother hates this game ad. Yeah.
where they're only shown every extravagant 40 second long death animation and they're like, this is horrible. Oh my god, this is what video games are? Yes. That's not all. Sometimes they fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Please play Mass Effect. <laughs> well, I think we hit them all out of the park. Let me see what we got coming up next. This is going to be a short one, possibly. The next one comes from Tom P. Hey, fellas, what do y'all reckon is the non-game fictional property that most games steal from? JoJo's. I've reread <laughs> <laughs> The Road and rewatched Heat this summer, and both of those hit me like a ton of bricks when I realized just how much The Last of Us and GTA crib from those, respectively. What's the most blatant thievery you can recall, JoJo's? What's some non-Western thievery you can remember, <laughs> JoJo's? This is JoJo's. So familiar with those catalogs. Love the show. Keep it up. P.S. As someone who has loved Cheerwine for a lo very long time, keep up your love of it, fellas. Hell yes. Uh, shout out. Uh, just real quick, P.S.A. Uh, uh, Cheerwine's great in a bottle. Uh, it's, it's really good in a can. But on the tap, it's fucking transcendent. Anyways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> by God. Let's, uh, let's get to this. Uh, here's, let me, you know, a lot of people will say and then not explain. Let me explain. Even things we thought in Castlevania were not JoJo's reference, were in fact JoJo's references, including the cloth from Aria of Sorrow that floats around and has a dagger come out of it and an arm was originally literally called Donovan after Donovan from JoJo's. And Iga's like, come on, no. <laughs> uh, I think I can top JoJo's. Mm? Uh, if, if you're talking about things like pulled or cribbed directly from a work of fiction, uh, like by volume, gotta be number one, uh, the Bible. <laughs> of course, I knew that's where you were going, you bastard. <laughs> yeah, it had to be, right? <laughs> you want you want to talk about references to the Bible in Castlevania? They're literally quoting the book. <laughs> <laughs> aggro, <Whoa>. aggro. <laughs> mm -hmm. Th that that's nonfiction. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> the the Earth was created six thousand years ago. I totally believe this. <laughs> it just makes sense. That I've done the math. Uh, not actually in the book. <laughs> As it turns out, a lot of things aren't actually in the book until somebody writes popular fan fiction. And I also believe in prosperity doctrine. Oh, God. <laughs> Mercantilism, also a, a popular thing in video games. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Agro. I thought he was going to bust out Astro Boy. <laughs> or Cassern and then he goes Bible and I'm like come on <laughs> I, I thought about Hero with a Thousand Faces but I, I don't have the will to get into another argument about how that book is mostly bullshit <laughs> <laughs> ah you understand <laughs> after the Bible everyone else is just worried there's it's gonna sound stupid <laughs> I, 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 I mean there's easy ones there's just Berserk yeah, yeah, yeah. Berserk is definitely Huge. like there's no, you can't even count them all. I mean, literally all of From Software's output for the last yeah, 10 I years. <laughs> right? I was going to say the top selling game of maybe the entire year is going to be just, we love Berserk. Yeah, and then everybody ripping them off and everybody who thought mm -hmm. they were ripping off something else, but it turns out that was ripping off Berserk. So, Berserk, yeah, yeah, that's really how fun. That's really how it goes. Uh, the Sopranos. Mm hmm. Until I watched The Sopranos, I didn't understand that it was uh, every single thing Rockstar has ever made ever. <laughs> oh, no. And almost every single character in a GTA game can be almost one to one compared to a character in fucking The Sopranos. Man. Uh, down to the point where it's like, where it's like, well, well, our rich douchebag protagonist in in GTA 5 is also regularly in therapy, and that's how we like book in segments of the game. Yeah, and that's oh an entire God. thing in The Sopranos. Yeah, when I found is, that out, is, is I that he so goes hard. to therapy. I laughed so hard when I found that out because it was shortly after GTA 5 came out that I learned that about The Sopranos, and I laughed so hard. <laughs> I'm very excited to see how how Breaking Bad ish the next GTA game ends up being. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not looking forward, however, to feel watching Sex in the City and finding out that's what The Last of Us stole from. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
like Astro Boy is is uh, is obviously a big one. Every single thing that uh, like anything with a small robot child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, really obviously, like they define dwarves and elves and orcs and shit yeah, for, forever. We're, we're still we're, not we out will from never under escape. That. <laughs> no, like you can you can go back and even in like pen and paper games, you can go back and see the shift away from uh, Robert E. Howard to Tolkien, and like hmm. uh, when it just became more popular. D and D used to look a lot more like Conan the Barbarian. Oh. oh. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the mechanics make a lot more sense through that lens, but <laughs> it's just all fucking Lord of the Rings now. That's sad. Conan the Barbarian is very cool, at least from the movies I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I've read a couple of the books, and I, I I honestly really like book Conan. He's smart and cool. Mm -hmm. He really is. He solves mysteries. He's like, they're like Conan. You can't stab that guy. He's a wizard. He's like, fucking watch me. <laughs> And then he stabbed a wizard. And they're like, oh, Conan, you stabbed that wizard. Please have sex with me. Yeah, wizards having to prepare their spells, like, that real, that feels like a thing that has the DNA of Conan, because I remember reading Conan stuff, and it's like, yeah, I can do magic, but I have to prepare all these fucking metal dusts and make circles on the floor that and do all this bullshit. The the D D magic one is actually from uh, a book series by Jack Vance from back in the day. Hmm. That's why it's called Vancey and Magic. Oh, that's bold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything in D&D &D is stolen. <laughs> no oh. shit. Well, of course it Whoa. is. Gygax got sued once because he was literally using the term Hobbit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we recently watched <laughs> through Columbo and then realizing everything in K's clothes is just stolen from that and <laughs> oh, other yeah. mystery series it's, is hilarious. It's so good because there's an episode they just took directly and made way worse. Yes. I mean, like, it's TV filler, too. It's not even in the manga. With Detective Conan, like, you're going to run into the law of large numbers, and eventually it's going to come up. It was so bad, right? Because this is this episode of Conan that is so directly stolen, beat for beat, every plot device, is in the first three seasons so i had seen the thing six times or something so when that episode of Co uh, of colombo starts and there's a phone ringing in a house with a dog and a person i'm like oh my god they spoiled <laughs> this entire episode of colombo <laughs> i hope it's still good and then you, and then you watch the rest of the episode and you're like oh this is great man that episode of case close sucks <laughs> <laughs> i remember that episode because i remember thinking hmm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that episode of Case Closed is really bad. It's funny because as a kid, as a kid and young adult watching that episode of Case Closed over and over, I'm like, this is a really neat mechanic to trigger a homicide. Oh, oh, it's t so, oh. <laughs> As it turns out, I should have just watched Columbo at a younger age because, man, that was an awesome episode of Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you're totally right, Bob. There are a lot of things that just borrow uh, from Columbo. I think it's bullshit that, uh, like, he gets a diner in case closed. That's all he gets named after himself in Conan. Right. Yeah, he he should. He does deserve more. He deserves more. He co-wrote Conan. <laughs> <laughs> he co-wrote it. I'm going to try this question. We're going to just try this out. I'm going to go into the test room, the, the fitting room. Okay. I'm just going to put it on and see how it works out. Let's try. Okay. Lacuna Craft writes, hey, big thinkers. We always hear about the dumpster fire parts of the game industry is currently. But what is the thing you like about it currently? Uh, the industry? It's an industry in the current society. I don't know that it, it, there are any amazing parts of it, but... I guess if there's a positive, aside from just going sheer tech, trying to keep it industrial and business oriented, I would say the part where we have things like Unreal Engine that make it easier for small studios or medium-sized studios to make a game without having to reinvent the fucking wheel. I think that's been a very positive influence. Unreal Engine 3 was not. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, that, that's the same thing I was going to go for of like seeing these over the past year. Like some of my favorite games have been those smaller studios. It was Unreal making something that's actually good. Yeah, um, we, we are sort of getting over the like 7th Gen kicked off this 
glut of like, we're going to democratize game development. Everybody's going to make video games. Like, oh, wait, a lot of these are really shit and they're janky as fuck and they don't work. <laughs> and I think we're finally like evening out into having a spectrum of scales of game development. Yeah, it really helps that we have so many different relatively viable engines on the market. Like there are so many. You have Game Maker, Unity, Unreal Engine, Godot. Uh, they're countless you can even, as I understand it, ship an RPG market maker RPG. <laughs> no one's stopping you. <laughs> they, 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 should, they should be. <laughs> Sony won't keep you out. They close the wall. They open the walled garden. It's come on in. <laughs> we used to have to go to Xbox Live indie games for this sort of shit. <laughs> now it's just up for everyone to see on uh, the PlayStation Store. It's great. But yeah, I don't know. I think if there's a positive end to the industry, it's that. Um, did anyone else have any other things? I mean, sort of sp sprouting from that same area, we we have seen in the recent few years that there has been a an enormous, pretty much industry-wide push toward baking in uh, customizability and accessibility options into at least larger scale titles. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I mean, it's... It's some of it is definitely uh, like you, they're corporations, so you bully them enough, and they're going to do something right. Mm -hmm. But th that does mean if you're looking at the macro scale, that is an industry moving in the right direction. That is nice to see, even if all of those cool accessibility options will eventually go over the cliff with the rest of the industry, <laughs> while it devours itself trying to make Destiny work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I really have appreciated how much uh, Xbox first party and um, Sony first party have done a great job of building in accessibility features. Like uh, Sony especially has some really cutting edge stuff and I think it's great. It's I never expected to get here to be honest because it's such a weird field to try to make accessible because it's something you have to physically interact with which already prohibits people but then X, uh, xbox came out with the accessibility controller mm -hmm. um yeah it's 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 they're making good strides in that regard this is where i go and it's not a dunk i don't think nintendo's doing this at all <laughs> i just can't think of one time they did it oh no mm. L like in terms of the accessibility type stuff yeah oh uh, oh yeah like the the people that run like accessibility like in gaming companies just go yeah, Nintendo didn't do shit, and they do not answer any anyone's calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sad. They they have no interest in doing literally anything in that area. Yeah, that's pretty Nintendo. Uh, I like that we're finally winning the culture war against the fucking luddite sh shamans <laughs> who are, who tr who tried to convince people that frame rate wasn't real for a decade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know the difference. I like that every single streaming service has bombed. <laughs> that, that's been pretty fun. Right. Like, you know, if you set that on fire, it's going to burn down. You don't know what you're talking about, old man. This is the future. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've listened to their marketing, and I think lighting wood on fire will just be pretty warm forever. <laughs> and that's what's happened to everybody else. But I'm built different. It's going to work when I do it. <laughs> I knew that guy in high school. <laughs> All I needed was to add greater fuel. <laughs> <laughs> I could just be piling the money on. It'll work, right? <laughs> but yeah, I yeah, I really do appreciate that from a console manufacturer side and an engine side and everything else, uh, input latency has been more prioritized. Because that sort of push started with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. If that, that sounds insane, but it's true. Um, during 7th gen, that's when they started explicitly caring about game feel mm. as an industrial awareness thing because people started building input lag testers and other things. Um, Neversoft and I believe Treyarch had, had their own. It's uh, Infinity Ward did. Um, like their own way of testing that. And I, I think that's been really hugely important because... Uh, yeah, no shit, that's important. There's a reason I played Call of Duty that gen and not fucking Battlefield. And it was that Battlefield on console felt like dog shit. Which is why it's a shame Bad Company never got, like, 
a next gen port or a back compat upscaling frame rate or anything else because that's just left to die in seventh gen yes running at under 30 frames per second it sucks yeah so we found positive things happening with this industry it's not a nightmare i feel like it's getting better in in some ways yeah in some ways Mm -hmm. well you know i'm willing to say in every way since seventh gen because even if there are still people throwing themselves onto the pyre of the live service game, <laughs> it, 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 so many corpses are on it now that some people are like, I don't know about this one. There's not room on the fire anymore. I don't know. <laughs> I, how, how, how is the fortune god going to bless me if I'm not suitably emulated? It's okay if there's no room on the fire. You can buy a virtual spot on the fire here on the blockchain. I like how, I like how fast fucking PR departments went, no, this 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 NFT shit is poison. We have to escape. I, I am sensing a, a trend here in everything we talked about and that the video game industry, like it's everything that it already had has been getting better. It's just inventing new things that are bad. Yes, <laughs> but they're sinking on their feet fast enough to run away from those sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was actually stunned how fast that NFT thing just disappeared. They were like, we're doing it. And everybody's like, fuck you. And they're like, we're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think by and large, the people who maybe are steering the active part of the industry, not the try hard new to the game sort of part of the industry, like with the blockchain people. Because by and large, established ent- entities aren't trying that. By and large, it's a bunch of upstarts. That that is what I'm seeing. Yeah, uh, that are still going for it because the the big ones were like, we're gonna do it, and then immediately backed out like Ubisoft. Yeah, yeah they're like, we, we we have this division of oh, NFTs that oh, we can put over there and just point at well, whatever the shareholders. Bob, ask. this will lit- you literally are feeding to the exact point I was gonna make. Most of the people who are exploiting the game industry and driving it towards worse trends and making it kind of gross overall are literally burning out right now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I feel like as a longer trend. Oh, looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that guy lit himself on fire over there, but that's okay. <laughs> In fact, I, I think it's I think it's great that uh Ratchet and Clank, they shipped that and they're like, Yeah, we didn't crunch on it at all. I'm like, oh, that's great. Can all of Sony's first party do that? And I look at each of their first parties and I'm like, Well, Grand Turismo is made by Japanese developers and they're always crunching. Yeah, well, let me <laughs> Let me look at what else is coming out. God of War Ragnarok. I refuse to believe that can ship without crunching based on how the, the, everyone on the team talks about it, basically. Like, I'm just convinced. If they do if they do a press release where they're like, we didn't crunch on Ragnarok at all, I will be floored. I will be like, holy shit. How is that even possible? Because crunching doesn't do anything. It does stuff for a short period of time. The problem was we all for started three getting three weeks. Right, exactly. Yes. The problem is they started normalizing the Nether Realm thing, where it's just like we're crunching for six to nine to months to a year, a good, year and a good half. Good job. You've been you've been getting twenty hours of productivity out of your employees a week for nine months and ruining their lives. You literally helped no one, not even yourself. What are you talking about? I'm a manager. I managed yabba dabba dabba. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Uh, let's move on. Uh, Moon Lordress writes in, what's the worst game that you guys still stand by? I got this. Let me just read the uh, the fucking PS2, PS2 RPG. <laughs> I mean, PS2 action game yes. list. Everybody wants a spot on this spot. I recall some streamer <laughs> podcast where Bob praised something and Dan immediately said, this shit sucks. This is Bob's thing. <laughs> Nano Breaker, I think. I think it was Nano Breaker. I think it was Chaos I, Legion, I, but uh, yeah, it was yeah, probably was Nano Breaker before the Nano Breaker stream. Uh, yeah, the, the the one specific instance I'm thinking of is fucking for, for Chaos Legion. Yeah. <laughs> God, Chaos Legion is such trash. Yeah, no, it's absolute <laughs> trash. I wasn't even going to bring it in, but I probably should. <laughs> um, it still has a really good soundtrack and is, has some immense vibes from those, uh, those cutscenes that are insane. Yeah, no, there are a lot of cool things in chaos legion yes but then but then you're like you know who made that the guy who was the steward of street fighter for a few years there and i'm like oh oh 
Uh, but what <laughs> I was really going to bring up is uh, Gungrave. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That game is complete trash. You just mash the square button and turn. <laughs> but it's the best game. It is. <laughs> he looks cool, so I think I'm still going to play even the old one. It's pretty cool. You just got to keep mashing square. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Bunny Must Die. That, that game is... Uh, it feels like trash. It has some insane boss design. It has incredible spikes in difficulty. And the original soundtrack is unbelievably you shouldn't have shipped this. But that game is really fucking great, actually. <laughs> I don't really have the part of my brain that admits that uh, video games that I like could be bad. But <laughs> yeah, based if I on, like something, it's good. Based on external feedback I've received, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to have to put Balls 3D on this list. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of on. the greatest the, the genesis version of that game is one of the greatest retro fighting games ever made jesus christ all okay. versions of street fighter 2 can eat my ass i mean uh, maybe we could agree on that but uh i i i fuck man like i like siding with aggro on balls because it's funny but hearing it with the whole chest genuinely is making me uncomfortable yeah no you're, you're in it for the car ride but then i like i pull open the members only jack and you see the dynamite and you're like maybe maybe, maybe <laughs> i want to like, get out now i'm like nah, we're oh, in this shit, man. dude you're and i'm like really every grass starter <laughs> uh no i skipped a couple gens there <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and, and based on uh, the general consensus I see forming, I may have to start putting the Horizon series on this list. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, the populist opinion, I think, is that Horizon's very good, actually. Hmm. I think. Critically speaking, at I least. I think nowadays it's becoming more like, oh, yeah, that thing that I didn't play because it came out on top of Elden Ring. <laughs> right. <laughs> this needs to stop <laughs> Uh, <laughs> don't worry. Just don't don't worry. The next one will ship just in time for it to happen with Elden Ring two. <laughs> no, they're gonna rush out the next one so it can be on top of GTA six. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I, I hope it happens. <laughs> uh, also, depending on the crowd we're talking about, Minesweeper. Huh? I get shit all the time for loving Minesweeper. I fucking Why? hate that. Mine. Weird. I'm. I fucking hate that Minesweeper has uh situations where you just have to guess. Yep. That sucks. I fucking can't stand that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think versions of Minesweeper that have like, do you do you want one where there, it's not on where there, you don't have to guess? I'm like, yes. Yeah. That makes the game proper. Oh yeah. That makes the game correct. Yeah, I, I, I play updated versions of that all the time. <laughs> I still get people like, oh, I, I don't like Minesweeper. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to play it. What have you have you <laughs> have you tried uh, elementary school math? Like th this is a level of inability to recognize patterns that I just can't empathize with. I know I was confused by what the different flags meant, and then then finally finding out you don't need to use those, <laughs> right? That, that's those what for, made the game make sense like, to me. Put a flag here if you're unsure. If you're unsure, I don't think you're looking at the screen. <laughs> well, it could be one of those times where you're guess. You have to guess. Yeah, I think every part of Tales of Berseria is mid to bad, but the story and cast are really great. So I will always boost it. Mm. That's understandable. Yeah. It, yeah. it sure had that swamp dungeon near the end where I'm like, this is almost making me drop the game. This is terrible. Mm. You move so slow. Why is it so big? <laughs> See, I had this dilemma just now, right? Where mm. I actually, Berserk is my favorite one of all the, I played every single one from like seventh gen onward. So 800 of them. And I went, I don't remember this dungeon. And I went, do I remember any Tales dungeon? And I'm like, uh, maybe like two. <laughs> it because so now much of all... a Tales game slides off because it's anime cliche for fifty hours. <laughs> maybe the characters are good this time. Ah, uh, let's see. I forgave. I forgave Metal Gear Solid Four. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> you should never do that. But all right, no, I, I, I still haven't replayed it since. <laughs> I'm going to say that counts. <laughs> I remember playing and thinking, man, this game is great. It'd be great if it was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I'm thinking about how No More Heroes is technically a really bad game in a lot of ways, but it's really awesome. So, yeah, you no, know, it's, it's, it's too fucking cool. <laughs> uh, every single Mass Effect game. <laughs> I'm like, the, the, these are the, the these are bad. But if if, if you pretend that uh, if, if you're understanding to the fact that EA is a terrible publisher that made them ship in 10 months, uh you could you could kind of ignore it a little bit and try and see what they were going for <laughs> you know th there's a lot of really stupid stuff in uh in, in fallout 3 but but sometimes you want to turn your brain off and ex and explore this oven and that game allows you to do that and it, it it makes me forget about really really stupid plot details in that game and just the general hor horrible writing or uh the fact that th i guess that's gunplay I'm more just clicking on it. You're you're more just hitting the button that makes time freeze, and then your bullets do ten times as much damage in that mode for some reason. <laughs> yeah. God damn it! I had it and I lost it. Where'd it go? <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh no! Oh, uh, 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 I'm gonna upset uh, Twitch.tv slash Voxandra. A uh, Saga Frontier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Understandable. That game. That game is cryptic to the point of being unacceptable. <laughs> And in even the re-release that just came that came out last year, didn't really fix that much of it. It fixed some. It was pretty funny because we hit that point in that giving games a chance where it literally just says go back to the ship, and we're like, but we just got here, and it's like, well, yeah, because that area is a joke, and you're not really there's nothing to do out in the city. So the moment you go back to the ship is when the story progresses. And I'm like, wow, this is an insane solution to an insane setup for an obtuse moment in this game. It was uh, kind of hilarious. So they kind of fixed it in the weirdest way you can fucking imagine. Yeah, they did. They, they it, it. It's almost like they uh, like they added a um, like a goal that like just telling you the solution to some of those really weird parts of Kingdom Hearts one where it's like you, you need to le you need to go one screen away and then come back. Yeah. Yeah. There's some specific either go one screen array or away or explore every room on the map and and then it's like okay you've you we wanted you to explore but we'll do it silently with no guide but yeah th there's a lot of things in saga frontier that are really really cool it's a shame that it, it took a re-release to even get it to the point where m me who am a genetic freak would be like it has finally reached a level where i can actually power through it yeah that game's cool as hell i uh had it as a kid unfortunately uh i think it i think my brother successfully took it but i don't know it might have gotten lost too <laughs> see it's a cd based game he didn't give a shit about his cartridge games for some reason cd games a lot mm. more storable more easily so hopefully he still oh, has okay. that but uh yeah you could... yeah soccer frontier i had we had one and two as a kid and i played a decent bit of them you know got to play a lot of ps1 jrpgs and saga was cool as shit to play for a bit and then just put down because you give up <laughs> <laughs> yeah that can that can be rough um wh one that i got reminded from of this thing's really old and, and and janky i had a copy of uh heroes of might and magic 2 which upon returning to it and like even watching videos about it is maybe one of the more broken games i've played in terms of balance where it's like you can choose a variety of classes and they all have their unique uh, units in a turn-based RPG where you're like exploring and stuff. Uh, and some of them are just terrible to the point where it's like, why would you ever do this? <laughs> but but then I'm like, I'd like to be the one that has the giants. They throw the lightning bolts. <laughs> but the answer is warlocks. They have three different tiers of dragons. Of course, they're going to win every single time. Yeah, that checks out. <laughs> uh... The Caligula Effect 1 and 2. Those games are really cheap and don't have great mechanics, but they have really good music and the story is really cool and is it is actually trying to be modern in any way in terms of like the challenges people face and representation. I just wish they had a budget of more than the lint underneath the <laughs> office soda machine. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> It was like, this This isn't 4K. How does it look so rough? Oh, your textures are really low res. You know, I need to go back and play Star Ocean 3 again. 
because I remember really liking that game as a kid, being just super blown away by it. But from what I hear, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't think Star Ocean 3 is bad. I think it didn't have as much money as it needed, considering it was trying to be like a full-scale PS2 game with full voice acting. Yeah, you, you, you do just stay on one planet forever in that. <laughs> and... and they t like totally gutting the crafting system after coming off of Star Ocean 2 felt rough. Or it's like, no, we let you enhance your weapons, but not really do anything else. I'm like, oh. I, I really need them to port the original Dot Hack quadrilogy so I can say that that is my answer when I finally play them. Where I'm like, these vibes are great. It will probably piss me off playing it. Okay. We're going to move on to an important question. <clears throat> oh. Very important. Mm. Digdogger48 writes in, What's a specific sauce you find good on many things? For instance, I'm big on a Marie Sharp's habanero sauce. Uh, Texas Pete, Cholula, and uh, I need to try chimichurri on more things. <laughs> chimichurri is damn good. Yeah, Cholula is really good. I use that on a lot of stuff. And uh, Frank's. Always enjoy just having some oh, yeah. cayenne pepper as a sauce. Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. Great. Now I'm going to have to put below this. So this is a paid ad. <laughs> <laughs> I started eating uh, breakfast burritos last year. Mm. Uh, like every day. Because they could become a vehicle for uh, Cholula's green pepper sauce. They're a conduit for the to truth. Get into my mouth. <laughs> I, I need to try that. I've not tried the green pepper sauce. Oh, it's the best. They stopped selling it at our local Walmart, and I'm pissed. Oh, God damn it. I, I, I was also one of those weeb kids who would just put soy sauce on everything just, just to see if it would work. <laughs> just to feel. Put it on a steak once. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> soy sauce on mashed potatoes was interesting. Yeah, I've done that. I ended up there. You know, I don't think I've tried that one. I'm pretty sure I tried the steak one. <laughs> yeah, as it turns out, that was not a bottle of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> um, that was soy sauce I put on my fucking mashed potato. You know what? I'm going to say it. Yellow mustard. Yellow mustard's great. Yeah. It goes on so many different things. Everybody wants to be mm. like, that's not real mustard. And I'm like, no, I hear you. And I like real mustard. But yellow mustard's really good, too. Yeah, I think, think people who get smug about yellow mustard are ridiculous. Yeah, that's holy shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, of, of the things you can be snobbish about, that is just pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not real mustard. On what fucking... Go fuck yourself. What? <laughs> it's not real mustard? You're an idiot. Wait till they hear about the history of ketchup. <laughs> I'm a big fan of ketchup. I think that's solid, underrated, maybe. What's your favorite uh, ingredient in ketchup? Mace. <laughs> <laughs> no it's true old recipes for ketchup have a shitload of mace in it no, no tomatoes by the way Ooh. god this, this is like how an entire an entire chunk of my friend group learned about what the subway bread is supposed to be it's supposed to be bread not bread <laughs> but yeah uh tasting history had a really good video on white ketchup as they call it, it turns out doesn't have tomatoes isn't even white <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what? just star anise, lemon juice, and hydrochloric acid. <laughs> yeah, wasn't there was there was some uh, like the name ketchup comes from um, some chi some Chinese fish sauce. Yes, yeah, that that is the origin where it's just a bunch of Asian fish sauces uh, that have different Asian pronunciations that were uh, brutalized into ketchup <laughs> <laughs> and catsup. Uh, but yeah, this is, that video is pretty good for anyone who's interested in that. I would definitely not put it on everything. <laughs> we have time for one more question. Guy Fellows writes in, Two-parter, you can go back in time, or not, <laughs> and cause one unreleased <laughs> game to be released. That is a really interesting clause. We'll get to that. Which one do you choose and why? Second part, you could go back in time and cause one released game to spend a little more time in the oven. See, I thought it was going to be not released. <laughs> Which one do you choose and why? Okay, so we have to choose one or the other? Yeah, I think it just means, do you For want both. them to release? Okay, they yeah. ended both with that. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. That is that is copied and pasted from oh, okay. Anyway, so if I choose to not go back in time, do I just shoot lightning into a time rift? How does this? <laughs> yeah, the game releases now. Damn, that's what it means. It's like the that's... game was worked on 2005, well, but no, now no, no, they're no. going to release have you... it. <laughs> uh, have you ever seen the movie where the guy talks to his dead father with the ham radio? Frequency. <laughs> yeah, frequency. <laughs> Which I think, I think we have brought up on a mailbag before. I think frequency oh, has come God. up on mailbags before. <laughs> what the fuck? So it'll be like that, and Dan will just be like, "This game gets released," and then he'll like start shaking, and his eyes will go crazy as his <laughs> memories of the of the timeline change. <laughs> He's like, "What do you What do you mean? I I streamed Dead Island Two, and it was <laughs> terrible, <laughs> right?" I, I, I cause uh, Duke Nukem Forever, the original version, to come out, and me and Tosh never meet because it's the butterfly effect. <laughs> and then I turn out super goth for some reason. Oh, man, this is crazy. Why is aggro goth? This seems like an arbitrary, stupid writing decision made by an idiot making a terrible film. Who God, would do they that? Don't even, <laughs> they don't even watch Isekai anymore. <laughs> oh, God. No, I I only watch. The, I don't watch any anime made after Fushigi Yuki. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go back in time. Uh, cause one release game to spend a little bit more time in the oven. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield because they they're done making third versions that fix things. Evidently, since six gen. <laughs> yeah, that, the, you know I I agree with that. I. I think about that game, and all I think about is every stupid conversation I've ever seen. And I'm like, I'd love for that to not be there. Uh, I just love Pokemon games, and I really would have liked it if X and Y got yeah, a third I would, version. I would just be glad if that game was as good. I would just be glad if that game was as good as Sun and Moon. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like you have all these great character designs and everything, and then you made a game way worse than your last game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. X and Y was the first time where I was like, ah, this is going to be really good when they do the third version, and that just didn't happen. And so when short, Sword and Shield happened, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> please, no, we, please? We, 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 we did DLC. Do you want that? I'm like, no. I can't, no. You want actually, more of the bad thing, right? I... <sighs> I, I would uh, I, I'm legitimately more interested in a redone version of the main game than the DLC, just at a, at a blanket level. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ch change the course of history <laughs> forever. Okay. All right. I'm going to give Mass Effect 3 another year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But that would th th that would have fixed the ending. Yeah, mm -hmm. it very well could have. Anything's possible, I guess. <laughs> because because all the things were like, we fucking hated it, but there was no time. Yeah. That's everything internally that has come out since then was like people saying, no, we also hated it. It was just the, the writer was just like, no, we have no time. We're doing my idea. We have no time to even brainstorm something else because they had to get that game out in like 13 months. And that was with a delay. It got delayed four months. That game was supposed to have less than a year of full full year of development. Jesus Christ, what is wrong with them? He's insane. And you and you can feel it. You can feel it in that entire game where it's like there should be stuff in these levels like props. <laughs> props. Yeah, like there should like there should be barrels in that corner or there should be like a window yeah, yeah, on I, this wall. Yeah, I know. Just like, the, the where, fact where that is there it? are no props. Like I'm like so you they couldn't All right. It it just feels real hollow. Yeah, and also, and also, shit like we don't have any side quests. The most we have is is go do something on our multiplayer map for five minutes and come back. <laughs> like another year certainly could have helped with that. Wow. Um, I'm I'm gonna add a third layer to this question. Uh, a third mode for this question. Uh, you can go back in time and cause one release game to be unreleased. <laughs> Uh, I want to do it to Half-Life 2. I want to go back in time and step on every goddamn butterfly I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do wonder how much that would change the, the history of first-person shooters in so many games being like, let's just have the character stare at the cutscene instead of making a cutscene. <laughs> this is hard. There's so many good ones that would just, like, shift us into a better timeline. Like... Uh, I shoot World of Warcraft in the head. Not only do I save several thousand of my own hours, <laughs> uh, 
I I I put I put a cap on that fucking let's kill ourselves by making an MMO thing before it even gets started. Yeah. Or I sh or I shoot League of Legends and stop the MOBA version of that. Or I shoot PUBG and stop the Battle Royale version of that. Boy, what? there's sure a lot of these. Well, you couldn't shoot League. You would have to shoot Defense of the Ancients. Yeah, I feel like there are so many different variants that were forming back then for League and D D uh, Dota. Yeah, it's so hard to kill. Like it's a it's a high. Well, yeah, you got it. You got to kill Dota because that was the first. No, no, I. Uh, in fact, I'll I'll stop them all with one bullet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do it. I'm gonna shoot Warcraft three. Yeah, I was gonna say that's the only fucking way out. <laughs> that's that gets rid of WoW and League. You know, I'm gonna do one just to save menus. I'm gonna shoot Destiny so so it takes them longer to make the Destiny grid menu that's in every AAA game now. Well, maybe if Destiny didn't exist, we also wouldn't see everyone chasing the weird destiny like which never succeeded yeah that's I've, true i've been trying to figure out Mate. which of these questions to put destiny in because it's like <laughs> can i get yeah. the original version of destiny yeah or can i give them some more time to like fix it after it got fucked up yeah i here's the thing you give them an extra year we're not gonna get that original plot back yeah oh. so like that's some extra magic where you're like <laughs> stop that executive from saying it's too cool right? like the original destiny is the unreleased game i would like to have released <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> can, can i pull the can i pull the lever and like trap batman in the acid room so we don't have to deal with arkham combat for a full gen <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of options like that. Like it does killing destiny make it so AAA games don't uh have gear that's like this is 0.3% uh better on this cooldown of this attack. Did, is there any way for me to get people to use real numbers? Uh, no, I think granular RPG shit was already there. Yeah, I don't think you can I don't think you can you can stop the bizarre uh the bizarre thing of no, people think numbers are gay. <laughs> <laughs> from people pop, from popping into the mind of like PR dickheads or marketing yeah, dickheads. Yeah, it's like there's no way I can I can kill one single game in the hopes that it makes it so when I pick up a weapon in a video game, they just say, uh, I don't know, it's like 30% stronger than your last thing. It's a plus eight. <laughs> uh, uh, can, can I kill Peggle so Todd Howard doesn't get brainwashed into making Fallout bad because of it? Oh my god. Uh, oh my god. Or he's like, yeah, yeah, when you level up in Peggle, you get like, you get all these great effects and everything. So I thought everything in Fallout 4 should do that. Oh my God. Is this real or are you making shit up? No, this is real. Yeah, this I is, hate, I of fucking, course. God, I hate, God, I it's, hate uh, from that a, it's, it's from a, it's from a 2012 uh, keynote. <laughs> this sucks, man. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with one of the original questions of releasing an unreleased game. And I'm just going to do one that I've always been curious. What what would it actually be? I want to see Trigun Gunsmoke. I want to know what the heck no. that game is. Yeah. That would be neat. It would have just been another gun grave, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> it sounded like they were trying to make an MMO. <laughs> I, have, I have my version of, uh, of, of the unreleased game. The version of Final Fantasy VII that's Parasite Eve. <laughs> Ooh. That'd be interesting. Yeah. I, um, if, if we're talking about a game that, that needs another year in the tank, mm. uh, I, I would like to take the time portal back and show up naked in the parking lot uh, of Insomniac Games. And with a parking meter, I have wrenched out of the ground, stalk those offices while they're making resistance to hunting Ted Price. <laughs> <laughs> But it's okay, I grew that made Ted Price humble. Yeah, no, I'm going to make Ted Price wise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I take the time portal to release Sword Quest Air World, but just so I can uh, take care of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Holy shit! The, the, the cut! It's so deep. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck. I, I would like to see a version of Bayonetta 2 that has more time. I feel like there is a potential for that game to have been more completed feeling. Yeah. Like, I think there's a lot of things that just like the all the new weapons you put in have literally no moveset. And you could fix that. 
I, I assume they would want yeah. to fix that and that they had to yeah, release, yeah, but who knows? <laughs> yeah, I would assume that they wanted move sets on things. Oh, shit. Um, I, I, I know I got a crowd pleaser for this side of the call. Uh, Warhawk single player mode. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that, that they showed us the Warhawk at the earliest showings. Give me that. <laughs> mm, I'm still waiting for that. The funniest thing is um, I've had people come forward and talk about it. And mm -hmm. they were like, yeah, those were like two completely separate things. And they just could not figure out how to make a single player. So they asked an entire. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's really sad. <laughs> Do you think you know, if if the single player happened, we would have 10,000 ships in the air like they showed? <laughs> oh, God, no. That, that, that game would have either been like 16 frames a second. <laughs> Ooh, another layer. That's just what I needed. Because they were they, they were talking shit about like ray tracing light through the clouds and yeah. yeah. Oh, they actually do that in the game because what else are you gonna do with the cell processor? <laughs> right? The thing is like a himbo. It's dumb as bricks, <laughs> but strong as hell. I just oh god, fucking playing a giant air combat game with the vehicles, the Warhawks. They were so fucking good. <laughs> yeah. Uh in terms of an unreleased game. Because I have one of those at least. Mm -hmm. When they were trying to make a Kirby game in 3D for like the GameCube, and then they just didn't didn't do it. Mm. Like like I'd like to see the trajectory of this franchise if it didn't take until this year for there to be a 3D title. Right, the missing link. Yeah, because because this one's fantastic, but I would have loved to see like how things would have gone otherwise. And the the one I have where it's like if if you if I could just like walk up to a game and be like you got a year uh i would i think i would go up to star ocean five and be like you can get like three cutscenes out of this year man it's just yeah, like i don't think i don't think a year would have done much <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. i, I, I think needs to triple de 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 time i feel <laughs> yeah I, I i yeah i feel like it's quadruple to what they had there someone who's played literally all of that game like like i hit credits and went what the I, I guess we're I guess we're wrapping up. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, when you do when you do a let's play series of an RPG, you don't expect uh, it to have less videos than Devil May Cry Five, but but somehow <laughs> that happened for me. <laughs> so it, it, it's sad that I have to give another year to a, another Bioware game, but <laughs> I mean they all need it. Oh, please tell me we're thinking of the same thing. Dragon Age 2 is the most yes. obviously compromised game from time and it maybe it may be ever released to retail. I was I just going to ask a single you game. if it could be saved. <laughs> I, 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 a, a year would more than double the development time they had. <laughs> so it might have been like a reasonably maybe. bad game. <laughs> like that game doesn't really have a story. It barely has characters the resolution of every quest is we only had time to make one resolution. So both choices somehow compound into the same thing <laughs> in really <laughs> shameless ways <laughs> where it's, where it's like, especially if you load and change what you option, you pick, it's just <laughs> uh. unacceptable. Uh, the fact that like the second to last boss that they force you to fight that is big and important is from the DLC of the previous game <laughs> and just shit like that, where it's like there there's, you guys got nothing. Oh, yeah. Like, you made two areas. Th that makes me think of uh, Devil May Cry 4 and how that obviously needed more time. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, God. Yeah, I would give that another year. Uh, unreleased game that suddenly gets released. I'm ready to pull the trigger. I'm, I'm sorry for whatever this causes, but I need to know. Mother 3 on N64. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. That's a that timeline splitter. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, I the footage of that. I look. I really loved Earthbound. It would have been nice if there was a natural on ramp from there for it to continue as a franchise, and you know, people to find out what the fuck Ness is from, or like <laughs> for me to go mm -hmm. Earthbound, and they go, "Oh, I know what that is." <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> Mother Three is even even the Game Boy Advance Mother Three has like this. Obviously, went through a very very rough development it's very strange it has the energy of like a hundred concepts that we were developing apart from each other squished together yeah and it, and it also releases insanely late you know and um game boys game boy advances time yeah d did you know that the only reason earthbound even came out is because of uh 
Iwata getting involved with development and being like, we gotta, we gotta get this out. You guys have been making this for like five years. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I knew about that. That man is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, there sure are a lot of stories in the gaming industry about someone who is considered very, very talented. Uh, maybe having that um, reputation because somebody else came in and made it actually ship. That has happened, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I just, I it would have been nice. It would have been nice. It felt so odd after Earthbound that they just never... Like, that that never came out. I remember yeah. looking at Nintendo Powers and being really excited. You know, none of us have brought up uh, Sonic for the Sega Saturn. <laughs> Sonic Extreme or yes. some <laughs> Sonic yeah. game from Sonic Team? You're right, Bob. We haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am surprised Agro hasn't brought up that thing. I feel like he's brought up a million I, times. I was about to address the elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's why I didn't say it. I, I wanted I, I to be feel polite like to you. I need to make it clear that mm. no matter how interesting that concept sounded at the time, I would not for the world, for any Rockstar game, trade the amount of joy I've gotten for being super shitty about making the agent jokes every <laughs> single year. <laughs> For the experience of playing what was probably going to be a solid six anyway. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Bully 2. <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah that would have been nice. I'd, wait, Agro, you'd still have both. Just have a, the agent released now. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to Duke Nukem forever myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah I'm, I'm sorry we have to bring anchor on for this 80 hour stream of the agent john st john is the agent in the agent john st john <laughs> corporal in command God damn it. you know i i remember i remember being sad about about it and i think about it in regards to star wars projects star wars 1313 mm-hmm mm -hmm. That looked sick. Everyone was excited about it, like in development, and they it just they they couldn't. They, they were not allowed to finish that. Uh, also, Star Wars, the Star Wars game that Amy Hennig was making, that unfortunately, uh, God said no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, as it turns out, every third person, possibly narrative focused Star Wars game, sometimes just gets killed. <laughs> Silent Hills. That that's yeah. an obvious one we never brought up. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like there's there's an argument to be made that our timeline started slipping uh, the more people come came to realize that StarCraft Ghost wasn't going to be a thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Prey 2. Prey 2 would have oh, been real yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I'd love to see the real Play 2. <laughs> yeah, that sounded really cool, and it'd be great if, if Prey 2018 could have been named something else because Bethesda told them, uh, you can make whatever you want, but you have to call it Prey. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, but that's what is insane. wrong with them? Yeah, but that's yeah, yeah they, are, they oh. are genuinely insane. My God, speaking of crazy people, much more recently, uh, something I'm surprised that hasn't been brought up, yeah. uh, uh, an unreleased game that we'd like to see out would be a uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4 remake. <sighs> oh. <sighs> oh, the wounds are still too fresh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. Uh. It do. Uh, God, we're we're about we're about picking like like old wounds that I can just be bitter about now. Like I can just say Final Fantasy versus thirteen and be like, <laughs> yeah, I'm still upset. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I give extra time so that way we can get the full vision of what Days Gone was supposed to be with morality <laughs> choices and everything. Oh yeah. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I one hundred. I need to because there is no way. There is no way that they just didn't make the story every good choice. You're just you're you're standing there with your time travel watch and your duffel bags full of cash, and like talking to studio or uh, talking to Sony executives. Like, no, give him more time. Give him all the yeah, time and I'm he like, needs. And I'm like, not only that, I go to I go to John John Garvin and I'm like. Maybe you start drinking again, and I push him the bottle. <laughs> you need to believe in yourself. <laughs> At first, I was resistant because I'm I'm an enemy to Days Gone. However, 
I feel like I would love Days Gone a lot more in the same way I love Infamous uh, Second Son. If 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 you have the funniest villain options possible. <laughs> And I feel like John Garvin has the capability to make the funniest evil character possible. Well, that's going to do it for this Big Think mailbag. I want to thank everyone for sending in some really good questions. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit there and try to think about anything other than uh, the time I sprayed Mace in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Mace is the place. <laughs> I assure you in that moment, I wanted to be anywhere else. Dan's like, one squirt and it's south of the border. <laughs> <laughs> that burning's how you know it's a shirt. <laughs> this month's Gigaboots videos were brought to you by the continued support of our executive producers, such as Esme, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, Burning Pepsi Man, Adam Admar, Cooper Tank, and Virmvarm. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these gamers. If you want to support Gigaboots so we can continue the content crunch, then head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.